morning, boys and girls. It's Miss Lisa, your art teacher. Welcome back to my table of art. This week is going to be all about surrealism. What is surrealism? Well, I've sent you a little video to watch to help explain what surrealism is, so you'll have a better understanding why we're doing the project we're doing. Today, we're going to be focusing on an artist named Salvador Dali. He was all about surrealism. He made some really crazy, dreamlike, crazy artwork. Let me show you a little bit. I have a book right here. Salvador Dali. Look at some of the things that he painted. Now, look at these animals. Are their legs that long? No, but they are in his paintings because he's a little cuckoo. Nah, I don't know if he was, but he had some imagination. That's Salvador Dali. He had this big wraparound mustache. Mustache. They wax it and roll the mustache. That's Salvador Dali. Yeah, he's a little kooky. So I thought it would be a really nice idea if we do a painting that's inspired by Salvador Dali. Meaning we're not copying him, but we're going to do something that is inspired by him and his technique and his style. So I found a really cool picture, sort of like those animals with the long legs. And I'm just looking because my page marker fell out of my book. I just want to show you another painting really fast. This is a really, really popular one. A lot of people are familiar with this one with the melting clocks. They're hanging on the trees. They're hanging on the animals or what seem to be animals on the ground. That's one of his more popular ones. I mean, he has a lot of popular paintings, but everybody seems to know this one. It's the persistence of memory. Hmm, what does that mean? Well, this is a really cool painting, but I still want to show you one that we're going to do based off of that painting, which I don't seem to be finding. So you know what? I'm going to pull it up from my phone. It's a really cool one. And we're going to do one similar to it using a different creature. Okay, here we go. All right, Salvador Dali did this painting here. That's an elephant. If you notice, he has really long, thin legs. I don't know any elephant that has long, thin legs. Do you? I don't think so. But this one in Salvador Dali's painting does. So I think what we could do is we can make a Salvador Dali-like painting using a bird. So here we go. Look at our bird and our Salvador Dali legs. Birds don't have legs this long, do they? Nah, not unless it's like an ostrich, but this is just like a regular bird you see in your backyard. And I'm gonna teach you how to draw this bird, and then we're gonna use crayons to color in the bird and watercolor for the background. Now we're going to be working with cool and warm colors. So before we start our painting, Let's review our cool and warm colors. Let's take a look at the color wheel. Do you remember which ones are the warm colors? Warm colors, think about things that make you warm. Things in nature, hmm. How about the sun? Does the sun make you nice and warm? I know it does, what about you? So if you were thinking of the sun, what colors would you think of? Did you say yellow? Absolutely, yellow is a warm color. So we know that yellow keeps us warm by the sunshine. What about a fire? Ooh, what color would you think of if you thought about a fire? Did you say red? Wow, you guys are so smart. Red is also a warm color. And sometimes you'll see orange in that flame, just as much as the red. And you might even see yellow. So this is an easy way to remember which are our warm colors. And obviously, if these are our warm colors, the other side of our color wheel are all our cool colors. Think about ice and cold. The reflection from the sun is bluish and purple. These are our cool colors. So remember your warm and cool colors when you're working on your painting. All right, so we're gonna need some supply when doing our painting. We're going to need crayons because we're going to draw and color in our bird with crayons. So I have some crayons. 
you're going to need your watercolors because we're going to paint the background. So I have my watercolors. And obviously, we're going to need a paintbrush when we paint. What a cup of water. So how about you come on down to my table and we get started. I might move you back just a little bit because I'm working with this big, long piece of paper. Oh, by the way, you're going to need this paper. I provided this paper for you. And your teacher should send it home to you or give it to you if you're in class. So let's make room on my desk so I can bring you down. Come on down, guys. Come to my desk. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, you should be able to see my desk. And I really can't fit this whole big paper on my desk. All right, I'm going to start with my black crayon because I'm going to draw the bird first. So let me pull out my black crayon. Very simple. Here's the long piece of paper. I'm going to work with just the top part of my paper. You see my hand? There's only a few fingers above my hand till I hit the top of the paper. So my bird's going to be right in this section. I have all this area for his legs. So I'm going to start right here. And I just want to make a nice, happy, smiley face. Look at that big, beautiful smile I just created. That's all you have to do to start. Make a nice, smiley face. Now, if you want, you could turn it upside down and make a U, or you could just make an upside down U. We're going to connect an upside down U with the end of our smile and only go halfway through the bird. So here's my upside down U, and I connected it to the smile face. How easy was that, guys? And last, we're going to just, not last, but we're just going to connect the two ends with a straight line. So here we have the body of our bird. Not too hard, right? So he needs a beak. So how about a V? How about we make a V coming out of his face? V. So there's my letter V to create his beak. And let's just put a little polka dot here for the eyeball. Now birds have feathers and we want to show that he has feathers. So I'm going to take another V and I'm going to put it right at the back of his body. There's another V and we're going to make little U's connected. U, U, U. There we go. And last, we want to give him a little tail, and he's going to extend from the tip of his body here. And we're just going to make a U, a skinny U that gets closer in the middle. Okay, our bird is done, except for one thing. We've got to make our dolly legs. You ready? Dolly legs for our bird. And we're going to stop about three fingers from the bottom of the page because we don't want to go all the way to the bottom. When you get to the bottom of your dolly legs, make three little pigeon toes for your bird. And now go to your other leg and make another three pigeon toe for the bottom. And we don't make it straight. We give it a little bit of a crookedy feel similar to how Dolly did with his legs. So now our bird is complete, so let's add color. Now this is where you decide. Come on up so I can talk to you. Your bird could either be a cool color bird with a warm background, or you could have a warm color bird with a cool background. Since I made this one with a cool color bird, I'm gonna color in a warm color bird and give it a cool background maybe even a nighttime feel. So come on back down and I'm going to color my bird and you start coloring yours. Remember, we're coloring the bird with crayons, okay? See you in a minute. So I'm going to do my bird in my warm colors. So I'm going to pull out all my beautiful warm colors from my crayon box. And the main ones we have are orange, red, and yellow. But there's many shades of warm colors that, not shades, many uh, tints of warm colors that we can use. Look at all those oranges I have. And they're all warm, so I can use all of them. And even the red. But you don't have to. You could just choose to use your main red, orange, and yellow. 
which is what I'm going to do. So here is my red, here is my yellow, and here is my orange. And I'm going to put the others away. I'm not going to fuss with them. Three colors, three warm colors, red, yellow, and orange. So I'm going to start coloring in my bird. And you can do the same any way you choose because it's your bird. And again, I'm using warm colors to color in my bird, but you do not have to use warm colors. You can use cool colors. But remember, the background will be the opposite of what the bird is. My bird is warm, my background will be cool. You can add colors to your bird or you can make it one solid color. I'm going to blend some colors into my yellow once I start hitting the body. And don't worry if your black is coming through, it's okay, it kind of adds character to everything you do. See how I'm blending the colors? You can blend them or you don't have to. I like color, I like blending, so I'm going to blend and blend. And my back part of my bird will be red. Look how nice that looks. That's very nice. I like this. I'm coloring around his feathers. Blending my colors. I think I'm going to put a red beak on him. And some yellow feathers at the end. And I'm going to blend the feathers here, just like I did the body. But that's my choice. You don't have to. Okay. All right, so I'm done coloring using my warm colors. So now I'm going to start painting my background. And you can decide how you want to do your background. I'm going to use cool colors. Do we remember what my cool colors are? My cool colors are going to be my purple, blue, and green because my warm colors are yellow, red, and orange. So the background of my bird is going to be cool. You can do it any way you want. I might start out with blue on top. I might go into maybe purple in the middle and maybe green on the bottom. I kind of like that idea because it feels like it's the sky and the grass. So come on back down. I'm going to set up my watercolors and I'll see you in a minute. Here we go. My watercolors. And don't ever worry that your watercolors are a mess because that's a sign of an artist. Now I'm going to put a scrap piece of paper behind my painting. Even though this paper protects my table, I'm still going to have a scrap piece underneath because I'm going to be brushing across and it's going to get everything wet and I just want to keep my table dry. Now look at this blue. I'm starting out with blue. You would think I have nothing left in there, but I actually can get a lot out of that little cup. And you'll be surprised. See, I have some on the side here that I can use and some in the middle. I'm going to wet it up really good and I'm going to just going to start painting right across. Take your paintbrush and go right across. The more water I add, the lighter the color will be, but the more I could spread this color because I have so little left in my little cup here. Or do I? Look how much I made just by adding the water. And of course, with our crayon resist, I could go right over this bird and it wouldn't matter because it's going to resist the crayon, but I'm still going to go around it if I can. And if you can't, don't worry about it. It's still okay. I like to make it a little darker up on the top. And gradually come down with our blue. Oh, I love it. It's looking good. And our dolly legs, crazy dolly legs on our bird. I'm going to start going into my purple now. I think I've got enough blue. So I think I'm going to start waking up my purple color now. Watercolors need to be woken up. And now I'm bringing this down a little bit. Oh, look at that beautiful color. I love 
purple and blue mixed together. I just think it's beautiful. Don't you? This is so pretty. I think I like this better than the warm background. This is beautiful. I'm loving this. I love watching colors blend together. That makes me happy. Maybe that's why I'm an art teacher. I just love color. Nothing better than beautiful colors to brighten up a day. And a beautiful surrealist dolly style bird with the long crazy legs. I'm loving it. I hope you are. I'm going to go back and get some blue and blend that down into the purple. Look at that. I love, love, love it. Love it, love it. Okay, next I'm going to go down into my green now. This is a long piece of paper, so I'm trying to keep it in, in the camera view. Now I got my green. Wake up, green. We need you to work. Let's go from the bottom up because I want it to be darker on the bottom, but not as dark as I'm going up. Just my choice. No reason, no rhyme or reason to it. Just because I want to. Now you have to notice Miss Sleese is going very fast. You guys take your time. There's no reason to rush your artistic expressioning. Expressioning. Did I just make up that word? Artistic expressioning? <laughs> I get very excited when I create art. I love creating art. Guess what? I'm going to be there in person for summer school. I cannot wait to see everybody's beautiful smiling faces that I miss so very, very much. I'm done. How about you? All right, let me put my water over here. Let me close up my palette. I'm going to bring you up. That was fun. And it's a little wet, but I'm going to hold it up. Oh, how beautiful is this? Our Dolly inspired surrealist painting. I love it. It's dripping a little bit on the bottom, so I'm going to fix it. Okay. All right, boys and girls. I hope you enjoyed this week's lesson about surrealism. Uh, we only have a couple weeks left to school, so I guess I'll see you next week. And then... I will see you in person if you're coming to summer school. All right, guys, this is Miss Lisa, your art teacher, saying ciao for now from my table of art. Be good, stay well, and I'll see you soon. Bye, guys.